Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Christ had to suffer and to rise from the dead, and so enter into his glory. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you I am going away and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens you may believe. I will no longer speak much with you, for the ruler of the world is coming. He has no power over me, but the world must know that I love the Father and that I do just as the Father has commanded me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So again, we're reading through the Acts of the Apostles, and one of the things I keep mentioning over and over again is we see the roots of the church. So in the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles, we hear about the first bishops. It's in the first apostles. When Matthias was chosen to replace Judas... One of the psalms that was quoted by St. Peter was his office, let another take. In Greek, that word for office is episkopos, which is where we get the word episcopacy, the bishops. So let his bishopric be taken by someone else. So we know the apostles were the original bishops, and those bishops continued to expand as they formed more apostles. Then in chapter 6 of Acts, we heard about the first deacons who are supposed to be the servants of the apostles. So we heard about the second root of the church. And we know about bishops. Then we heard about deacons. And now in today's reading, we hear about the apostles appointing presbyters, from which we get the English word priest, right? The word presbyterate, about the body of priests in a diocese, right? So here in Acts of the Apostles, we see the threefold level of the priesthood, the bishop, the priest, the deacon, right? Just like we see in our church today. Again, it's because of things like this that when scholars read the Acts of the Apostles, they say, well, it has a really high ecclesiology. It looks really Catholic. And so this must have been edited much later on. Clearly, this doesn't come from the earliest days of the Apostles, is what some scholars say. What's interesting about this, too, about this threefold level of the priesthood, is that like so many things in Catholicism, It's rooted in the Old Testament. We as Catholics, we read the Bible as a whole. So in the Old Testament, likewise, there was a threefold level of the priesthood. You had the high priest, right, who was the descendant of Aaron. And then you had the Levites. And the Levites were kind of split up into two different groups. There were priests who were descendants of Aaron specifically. But you also had people who were just regular Levites, right, who basically assisted the priests in offering the sacrifice, right? So even in the Old Testament, you have the threefold level, the priesthood, right? So if we pay attention to the Acts of the Apostles, we see all of these things. But one thing else I wanted to point out today is this very intriguing episode of St. Paul. And this comes from chapter 14 of Acts. Again, one of my biggest pet peeves as a priest is we hear from St. Paul so often in the lectionary. And one of the biggest disappointments is when you hear somebody coming up to read from a reading of St. Paul, right? And they'll say something like, Brothers and sisters. What the heck are you talking about? This is St. Paul talking. This is the man who was shipwrecked multiple times. This is the man who was scourged and whipped. This was the man who was beaten and stoned, right? He would not have sounded like this. Imagine what it would be like for St. Paul to come to our church. How would he present the gospel? Right? He would be a very hard and very intimidating and probably even a kind of a scary looking person. Right? He wouldn't sound like some gentle, 
calm, peaceful person. Right? And we see that in a particular way in today's reading from Acts. We read that St. Paul was stoned and dragged outside of the city. Right? Imagine what it would be like to be stoned to death. It's one of the most horrifying ways you can imagine to die. But what's interesting about what happened in today's passage is that after he was stoned and dragged out of the city, the people literally thought that he was dead. That's how badly he had been stoned. But we read that shortly after this took place, after all those people who stoned him left, the disciples gathered around him, and St. Paul got up and entered the city. Did you notice that this morning? Did you notice how amazing that is? He was just stoned so badly that people thought he was dead. And all of a sudden the disciples gathered around him and he got up and went back into the city. Right? It was miraculous. Some scripture scholars even think that St. Paul actually did die and that he was resurrected and brought back to life. Right? A sort of episode like Lazarus. And it's amazing what St. Paul was able to endure. Something I think that we need to take away from this reading today, especially as we read through all these different episodes of St. Paul, how much he suffered for the faith, for the sake of spreading the gospel. It should be very convicting to all of us. Right? What have we suffered for the sake of furthering the message of Christ? Many of us have hardly suffered at all. Maybe we need to learn from St. Paul. Maybe the reason why we're not suffering it's because we're not fully giving ourselves to the spread of the gospel. How many missed opportunities are there for us throughout every day, throughout every week? Opportunities to share Christ with another person, right? To bring up the church in conversation, to bring up our faith. And how many times do we avoid it? If we're very honest, in our culture today, it is taboo to talk about faith and politics, right? And so many of us have this inherent fear to bring up the faith, to bring up the church in conversation. We need to be more inspired by the example of St. Paul. Look at how much he suffered for the faith. He was willing to lose friendships. He was willing to lose his reputation, even his life, just for the sake of furthering the gospel. What are we willing to suffer? Are we willing to be courageous and brave, to constantly be seeking opportunities to share the faith with others?